So people are creatures of habit. And every day that we drive to work, we follow patterns. But every day we turn up at work, things are slightly different. And often it's imperceptible. We know the story of a frog. If you put it in a, a pot of cold water and slowly bring it to the boil, the frog never notices until it's all too late. And that's a common thing for, for business people. And last year at the conference, and I didn't put this up in the break, I put this presentation together over a week ago. It was interesting that Lou referred to this this morning, but Lou's comment from last year that absolutely leapt out at me, you know, was that in 10 years from last year, so nine years from now, half of the salespeople in the room, half the salespeople that work for us, wouldn't have a career in selling anymore. That they'd actually be gone. And the question is why? And learning from others, I think, is the key to making sure that we prosper. There's great lessons to learn from others that are successful and also from failure. So let's think about what the drivers are for change. Obviously, uh, economics and political change will change things for our own organisations. Things like the global financial crisis, things like a big carbon tax completely change the fundamentals of the economy, maybe not dramatically at first, but over time as far as how competitive we are. And commoditization is very real for organisations and they struggle to know how to cope with it. Does anybody know who this person is? I've got a free book for anybody who can tell me who this person is. Who Did you say Tim? Yeah, Tim Berners-Lee, the man who created the internet. That's for you. Tim Berners-Lee has changed all of our lives in business very dramatically. But trade policy and tariffs change things. Uh, foreign currency, you know, for our exporters, you know, we had a good advantage in foreign markets because of a weak Australian dollar. That's not the case anymore. And it's likely not to go back to weak levels for quite a period of time. If you're a pharmaceutical company and in other industries, patents expire. That changes things on you and the products and services that you are charging a premium for become commodities. You can suffer from IP infringements, problems in markets like China. For many organisations in professional services, you know, there's outsourcing of things like accounts payable to markets like the Philippines. There's IT services in markets like India that just have completely different economic models. And for some of us, we may think, well, these things are happening, but I'm immune from it. I've got a moat around my castle that makes me impregnable. I'm not sure whether anybody here would really feel that, but I actually want to give you an example. If you actually think of the USA post-World War II, they taught the Japanese about quality. America was the highest quality and biggest export manufacturer in the world, bar none. And they had some pretty big barrier to entries for anybody who wanted to challenge them. They had a massive Pacific Ocean. They had a protectionist uh, regime in place with, with their government, with tariffs. But over time, all of those things changed. You think about the Australian economy. Our um, resources boom is not going to last forever. It's going to change our economy. It'll affect all of our businesses. And let me give you an example of what happened to America. Now this is not a Photoshop picture, this is a real ship. It's bigger than a US aircraft carrier, and yet they only need 13 people, it's one three, 13 people to crew it. It travels at 31 knots, it travels fast enough to water ski behind. It does the trip from China to America four days faster than any other cargo ship. Five day trip, there's five ships that are doing that trip. It carries 15,000 containers, all for Walmart. And it can be unloaded in a matter of hours by 11 cranes that are all computerized. Here's the amazing thing. Every one of those five ships that just takes five days to cross the moat goes back to China empty. Every ship goes back empty. And there's many American manufacturers and Australian business that would say, well, yes, but, you know, China doesn't do quality. We do quality. Is there anybody in the room that thinks that the Chinese will not solve the quality problem? The Koreans have solved the quality problem. I remember looking at a Hyundai 
and thinking I would never want to own one of those, they make some pretty nice looking high quality cars that are very good value for money today. They solve their quality problem. So things absolutely change. So there's physical things that we can see that change markets on us. But what else drives commoditization? And we identified that that is Tim Berners-Lee. And we tend to think that you know, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates are the people that have transformed the world because of computers. But the internet has been far more transformational and I would add far more disempowering for us as sales organizations than anything that the guys have done with computers themselves. It's the connectedness of people with marketplaces that absolutely changes everything. Abundant, free information that disempowers salespeople. And I alluded to this earlier, you know, where we're trying to sell high value solutions and get away from being transactional commodities. But some of our high value solutions are just solutions that are becoming commodities. And the high value is becoming the smaller part of what we do. And that bottom left hand quadrant is becoming much bigger. And what we need to do is to figure out how to sell in that bottom left hand quadrant cost effectively in a way that we satisfy our customers and help them be successful and move and motivate and enable our best field salespeople to go and drive to value. 